I got this. Super slow and control. It's just a bike. Wow, that's insane. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are going to be chatting about e-bikes, why I think they are cool, why I like them, when I use them. But most importantly, we are going to be chatting about the all new propane Ecano 2 CF with the SRAM motor. Let's go. Full disclosure, I'm a professional mountain biker and I work with a bunch of different companies. That being said, propane is my main partner. They provide me with the frames and then I build my own bikes. The reason why I started working with propane about three years ago is because I thought they were making the best frames and the best bike for the type of riding I enjoy doing and I haven't been disappointed. I've really enjoyed using every single of their products, but now they've got a new e-bike and this has to be probably one of my all-time favorite bike and I'm gonna tell you why. In this review, I'm gonna try to stay as objective as possible and I'm gonna really point out the little thing that I really enjoy and that made my experience of riding this bike awesome. I've got about 10 days of riding on this thing and it's been incredible and hopefully you enjoy the review. This bike is a teamwork between propane but also SRAM and the all new Eagle powertrain motor. So there's only three other bike manufacturers out there, or actually 2.5, which are using this motor and very few people have been riding this bike. I've been lucky enough to be one of them and it's been an amazing experience so far. I'm gonna be chatting in this video about the motor, but you have to know that Propane has released two new e-bikes this year. The Ecano 2 CF, so carbon with a SRAM motor, or the Ecano 2 Alloy, which has the Shimano EP8 motor. Now I have no affiliation with either SRAM or Shimano. I like both companies, I think they make some really good products, but I could only pick up one e-bike. I decided to go with the Ecano 2 CF because Propane positioned this bike as the top of the line, it's a race machine, it's carbon, the level of finishing on it is exceptional and it's got the all new SRAM motor, which is really exciting. Propane has designed this bike to be the fastest bike possible, whereas the Ecano 2 Alloy is more a bike pack, playful bike, a shuttle machine, shred machine, however you want to call it, it is more affordable and it's got the Shimano motor, which isn't new, I've used it in the past, I've really enjoyed it. It worked really good for me, but this was definitely more exciting and I've been super happy with this weapon. In terms of e-bike experience, I've been using them for about five years. Before propane, I was on Cube and they were using the Bosch motor, but I definitely ride way more e-bikes now than I used to, mostly because the bikes are simply much better than they used to. Now I use a bike like this one not only differently really from my tie or my spin drift. I ride the same trail at probably the same speed and do the same sort of gaps. I feel like I ride e-bikes a couple of times a week at least to check out new trails if I'm tired, if I have only a small amount of time, but also to push my riding going downhill. The good thing with e-bike is that I can ride the same trail over and over, just like I would do on a downhill bike if I was to shuttle or ride bike park. And that really helps me to work on my skills, but also my speed. And for me, that's been a game changer because I couldn't really do that with a regular bike. Having the motor and the pedal assist just really allows me to get more riding and more riding. And now that the bike is this good going down it, you can really push on your riding. You no longer have to hold bike like you did a few years ago. Now we're gonna chat about this bike versus the previous bike, which is the Ecano Alloy. That was the very first e-bike that Propane designed. As you can see, it does not have the Proten platform, which is that suspension design that every single propane bike uses across the range. The so Eugene, the Tai, the Spin Drift, and the Rage. People, including myself, really like how it looks, but also how it performs. It is stable, it is predictable, but also because the masses 
are low on the frame, the bike stays really playful and very balanced. As you can see, this bike is an aluminum bike. The level of finishing is not quite as nice as the new model, obviously. But I have to say, I had so much fun riding this old Decano. I think it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was reliable. The Shimano motor worked really great. Very fun to ride. You could either build it as a 29er or as a mullet. Mine was a mullet with a longer chain stay for 445 millimeters. Um, the geometry was becoming a little bit short compared to the new bikes. For example, the Tai, the spin drift that were a little bit longer. Uh, but this bike rode amazing. It had some good support, provided really good traction. And I was really able to charge with it. It had a really um, long insertion for the seat tube, so I was able to slam the seat all the way down, which to me made a huge difference from the previous bikes I've had. And I had a ton of fun, but I think this bike is really a huge step up. So now let's take a closer look to it. Let's talk about numbers. First of all, this bike comes either as a 29er or as a mullet with the exact same frame. All you have to do is flip the chip right here. It is exactly the same system as the tie. Mine is a mullet setup. I've got 180mm of travel on the front, 170 on the rear, that's 29 front wheel, 27.5 rear wheel. With this configuration, my reach is 451mm, which is identical to my tie. So when I sit on this bike or my tie, which are the two bikes I ride the most, it feels exactly the same. Head tube angle, 63.6 uh, degrees, which is quite open with the weight of the e-bikes that get that bike to be extremely well planted, very stable, and it feels really fast, especially when it gets rough. Seat tube angle, 77.6 millimeters, so it's a nice upright position. And one thing I want to really insist on this bike is this part, the rear triangle. So the chain stays on this bike are 453 mm, which is actually 8 mm longer than every other bike I use. My Tai, Spin Drift or Rage, I use the chain stay setup as 445 mm. I was actually quite skeptical of the new length, just because 445 was already a bit longer than what I was used in the past. But when I moved to propane from Cube, having the longer chain stay is actually something that I really enjoy that gives me more confidence when it's fast, that feels more planted in the corner, and that allowed me to correct some weakness of my riding. But now going to an extra eight millimeter felt a little bit much. But when I actually used the bike, I was quite surprised. With the weight of the motor being lower down, I didn't feel that as a handicap. If anything, the bike felt more planted, more stable, but still very fun and very playful. So, I feel that was a very positive surprise, but when I was to choose either the aluminum or the carbon version, I almost went to the aluminum version because it had a shorter sense size, but now I'm actually glad that I picked up this one instead. So what's new with the SRAM Eagle powertrain system? Well, basically everything. It's an all-in system from shifter, rear air, motor, everything works together on the bike, and the idea is to give something more simple to the user and only the options that you actually use. You can still tune everything on your phone using the AXS app, but basically this motor has got two modes, range and rally, range to save battery and rally if you want to pin it. It's got some really cool features. You got uh, cost shifting where you can basically shift the gear and the chain is gonna go up and down the cassette without having to turn the cranks which is particularly good if you ride downhill and you anticipate a steep uphill and you have to pedal. You can just press the buttons without having to spin the cranks, that's really good. You also got auto shift, which is basically the bike's gonna shift for you, depending on your cadence of pedaling. In terms of numbers, so this uh, bike comes with a 630 watt hour battery and you can mount a range extender of 250 watt hour that you can just mount right there where you'll normally put a bottle cage. And that gives you an extra 40% of time on your bike. So you can extend 
uh, you ride, you can go further, explore more. It's not something I've used yet, but I'm definitely gonna get my hands on one because I think in the summer it's gonna be a really good tool when the days are longer and you can pedal further. In terms of performance, this motor gives you a 90 Newton meter of torque and a peak uh, wattage of 680, whereas the Shimano only gives you 85 Newton meter and peak of 600 for a similar size battery, which is I believe 626. So some like super impressive number and when riding the bike, it definitely feels like the motor is powerful. But what I've noticed and I really like is that it feels really smooth. So when riding technical or tricky single track, it's not super snappy, it's quite progressive. So that makes it quite manageable. Um, a little thing that's unrelated to the bike, but a trick that I learned with the e-bike is when you go uphill, I actually keep my finger on the brake to counterbalance the motor. If for whatever reason I put too much power on the cranks, I can counterbalance it by using some brakes just to make sure that the front wheel doesn't lift. To come back to the bike, another thing I want to say about the motor and the bike in general is how quiet it has been. There's literally no noise when you ride, just the tires on the ground. And I feel that increase your riding experience, but also your performance. If you can hear basically the grip under your tires, you can ride more confidently, you can brake later, you can ride faster, you can pick up better, smoother line, and that's been awesome. So Propane Ikano 2 CF start at 7,800 US dollar. That is the base level of the carbon version. The aluminum version though is cheaper. It starts at 5,300 US dollar. And the good thing with propane bikes is that those bikes are fully customizable. You can basically change every part you want on the bike. Even if you buy a frame, you can change the stickers, color of the badges, and it's really fun to play on the website with. Which by the way, if you end up wanting to buy a propane bike, make sure you check out my link in the description. I have an affiliate link. So if you do purchase one of these bikes that does support my channel, that allows me to do more and better videos like this one. So thanks so much for that. And that is also true for every other brand I work with. So make sure you keep an eye on the description. Now let's chat about my own bike and how I built it, which component I used. For the bike check, let's start on the front. Suspension, we have the all new DVO Onyx D1 38 mm diameter. It is more rigid, more precise, and it's awesome for e-bike. Because of the weight, the steering is more precise, which is definitely improving how the bike and how the fork feels. For settings, pretty similar to my spin drift, I just run more PSI to get more support. Now, in terms of braking, something that's really important with the bike, since the bike is heavier, it's harder to slow down. So I've got my Ace Dominion A4, exactly the same setup than on my other bike. I use 203 mm disc, sintered brake pads, and it's been awesome. A lot of people go to 220 mm when they're on their e-bike, but I'm light enough and those brakes are powerful enough that I don't feel I need it. I've got a Mudugger mud guard. In the winter, it is absolutely key to have something to protect your eyes, to keep the bike fairly clean when you ride. It is improving performances, but also safety. That way you keep the mud uh, away from your eyes. That's a, I think a must have on every single bike. Tires, I run Maxxis tires, obviously. I've got 3C grip. Uh, so that is the highest performance of rubber that Maxxis makes. I've got downhill casing front and rear. Since I got a motor, I'm not trying to save weight. I just want the maximum uh, reliability and performance. So that casing really uh, gives me the most support and allows me to ride the fastest. For wheels, one of my favorite products I've ever used, the E13 LG1R EN carbon wheels, super reliable. So with the weight of the e-bike, you smack on rocks faster than normally. So they've been incredibly uh, reliable. For cockpit, I've got the one-up carbon bars, 35 mm rise. I cut them down to 745 mm and it's paired with a 35 mm one-up stem. So that is exactly the same position and cockpit that I use on my Tai spin drift and my Eugene. 
feels very consistent. I love the flex. It's been awesome. Now something new for grips. I used to run the Ergon GE1 with the factory rubber and they were awesome. I was a big fan. But Ergon and the riders, including myself, have been working on a new grip. So a lot of research and development on the all new GDH and I've been switching them to all of my bikes. I've been really liking them. I feel like the rubber is a little bit softer and a lot of time I ride without gloves and I feel like this is the most suitable grip for riding gloveless. Moving to the middle of the bike, we got the DVO JDX shock paired with a 500 pound spring. I'm 64 kilos and I think this is a really good combo. That gives me plenty of traction, some really good support. That being said, I'm curious to try on this bike an air shock so I can get the suspension to ramp up even more for bigger impact. I think that would be for a pretty extreme case for me, but if I really decide to push my riding to like bigger hit, faster hit, that might be a smart move. Now in terms of seat post, we got a one up 180mm post, shim down to 170, Ergon SM Enduro uh, seat with the old slick rails. Now if I got the back of the bike, I've got a SRAM Eagle wireless transmission. And as mentioned, I don't have any affiliation with SRAM or Shimano. I use Shimano in the past on all of my bikes just because it was easy, consistent. I will purchase my transmission on backcountry.com. And by the way, check out that affiliate link I got down below the description. But I have to say that SRAM transmission works amazingly well. It's wireless and it really shifts super well under power. If you see on the back, the cassette is actually a prototype from E13 to work with that new T-Type style. And so far it's been working incredible. It is a 1352. Been super happy with it. I'm still waiting on the KMC chain and the rotor cranks to be able to use every single part from my partner on this bike. In terms of pedals, I run the famous Time Special 12 pedals and I got a lot of questions, but my shoes are actually the Physic Gravita Tensor Team Edition. When you buy a pair of shoes or a pair of pedals, it's really important to see that as a combo and the combo Physic and Time works amazing. I've been very happy with it. A last point I want to touch on the bike is actually the headset. So this bike got the ICR, which stands for Integrated Cable Routing. And a lot of people were against it, including myself. When Propane first told me that they were gonna put that system onto the Propane TIE, I was strongly against it. Uh, you know, it's something new, it seems more complicated, but now that I've used the TIE for the past eight or nine months, I haven't had one single issue with it. It makes the bike look cleaner, it is way more quiet and in terms of maintenance it really doesn't change a thing. I've also traveled a lot with the bike, I've removed the stem to put the bike in its bike box and it hasn't been an issue at all. I've been actually extremely happy with that system and the only negative complaint I've heard were actually from people who've never used one. So that's about it for this bike review. Hopefully I did a good job uh, telling you all I know about this bike, about my experience, how much fun it was to ride it. If you do want more information about it, feel free to drop me a comment. I'll do my best to reply to all of you. And if you enjoy the bike reviews or product review in general, let me know what else you want me to review. I think that's about it. Make sure you check out the links down below the description. Subscribe, like, comment, you know what to do and I see you next week.